I would like to recite from chapter 4 of a small volume called Joro Shenshu, A Guide, Concise Abridged Edition, published by Hang Wanji. This is what it looks like. This is what the cover looks like. It was originally published in July 2004, and chapter 4 covers the Pure Land Teaching, or Joro Shenshu. The aim. The Pure Land Teaching established by Shinran tells us that all are embraced by the power of Amida Buddha's primal vow. And trusting in this vow enables all to live in the present with confidence and peace of mind, and assures them that they will be born in the Pure Land where they will attain enlightenment. The purpose of this teaching is to enable all to live their lives to the fullest becoming aware of both potentials and limitations in this world. Through this teaching, all may be able to overcome difficulties, thus realizing true happiness within this lifetime. The Jodo Shinshu teaching of Shinran Shonen offers the promise of liberation based on Amida Buddha's primal vow. This teaching is significant for anyone seeking the way to real emancipation from the cycle of suffering. True liberation must be that which provides the strength to continue, even if things do not go as wished, in full recognition that all problems are transient in nature. Shoto Shinshu explains that such strength comes from Amida Buddha's ceaselessly benevolent vow power, which will most assuredly bring about birth in the pure land. It provides spiritual sustenance and lifelong fortitude. Choosing to proceed along this path leads to the same awakening as the Buddha. Although all of Mahayana Buddhism recognizes the assistance provided by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Jodo Shinshu particularly values the working of Amida's compassionate vow. The True Teaching, the Larger Sutra If all beings were free of self-centered greed, no wars, murders, or other senseless acts would plague humankind. Only because human beings fail to see things as they truly are, unable to separate themselves from self-centeredness, the world is burdened with problems, forever plunging further into the abyss of suffering. The purpose of Buddha Dharma is to cultivate higher wisdom and to lessen self-centered greed. Stated in yet another way, the goal is the attainment of Buddhahood. When Sakyamuni Buddha gave the Dharma talk that was later recorded as the larger sutra in which he tells of Amida's vow, his stated reason for appearing in the world was to expound the teachings of the way to enlightenment, and to liberate the multitudes of living beings by endowing them with the benefit that is true and real. Shinran selected the larger sutra as the true teaching, because it explicitly expresses the Buddha's aspiration for all sentient beings. Amida Buddha's Compassion Generally speaking, in the Buddha Dharma, the way to become awakened and attain Buddhahood is to accept the Buddha's teachings and perform prescribed spiritual practices. As Sakyamuni learned and Shinran discovered, the reality of life makes such practice difficult, if not impossible. Delusions and problems constantly confront the human mind. On the surface, people may believe that they can approach ultimate truth if they just follow the practices taught in the Buddhist tradition. But actually, the more they perform spiritual practices, the more entangled in their limitations they become. Then, the more people become aware of the depths of human unawareness, the more they realize how impotent they are to achieve enlightenment through their own efforts. Accordingly, although the ideal of aspiring to attain Buddhahood is very important, again, it is practically impossible. If anything, believing that one's own efforts are sufficient underscores the self-centered, ego-directed presumption of humankind. In response to such hapless circumstances, and motivated by compassion for all beings, Amida vowed to bring the attainment of Buddhahood about without delay or even to wait for human awareness. Recognizing this motivation, as described in the larger sutra, Shenran declared that, for himself especially, there is no other way to attain Buddhahood. 
Amida Buddha, and Sakyamuni Buddha. We know about Sakyamuni from historical evidence. Clearly, Sakyamuni Buddha was born a human being in our world. He performed ascetic practices in vain. Despite being a mere mortal, he attained enlightenment, becoming a Buddha in this world. He then spread the Dharma and passed on to final nirvana at the age of eighty. From a limited perspective, we can speak of Sakyamuni in the same way we speak of any other person. Although he was like us in every way, his way of being in the universe changed once he gained liberation. In essence, he became the embodiment of the Dharma. Sakyamuni boldly proclaimed that the Dharma was not something that he had arbitrarily created himself. It had always existed and would continue to exist. It had nothing to do with whether he was born in this world or not. All he had done was to experience that Dharma in order to expound it for others' sake. What enabled Sakyamuni to become a Buddha is the reality of the Dharma, the body of ultimate reality and the transcendent truth that goes beyond both time and space, yet is imminent in the world. Because human beings are unaware and filled with base passions, their minds and hearts cannot know the Dharma body directly. But according to Shinran, this Dharma body that does not have color or form works for all beings continually in their world of delusion. Once in contact with human beings, it becomes the Buddha that liberates all sentient beings in this world, namely Amida Buddha. In other words, Sakyamuni is the historical being who founded a spiritual teaching and taught about Amida Buddha's liberation. Sakyamuni urged everyone to experience the Buddha's primal vow and assured them of its power. Amida represents ultimate reality, which is beyond time and space. As the Bodhisattva Dharmakara, he vowed not only to attain Buddhahood, but also, out of his great compassion, to liberate all beings. Shinran reveres Sakyamuni as the human conduit for Amida's teaching. The Primal Vow The eighteenth of the forty-eight vows is also called the Primal Vow of Absolute Buddha-Centered Power. The Pure Land Masters noted a fundamental flaw in some aspects of Buddhist thought. How can liberation, the state of no-self, non-self-conscious effort, be attained through self? This is like trying to wash out mud by using muddy water. The answer lies in the power of the vow, the other power. The human condition is ego-centered. Therefore, Buddha-centered power is the only way to liberation. In effect, Amida has staked his own Buddhahood on the emancipation of all sentient beings. The Activity of the Primal Vow Liberation in its entirety is contained in the activity of vow power. Without exception, all beings can be liberated because its promise is unconditional. How does the power of Amida Buddha's Primal Vow work for everyone's benefit? First, it reaches into the mind and heart through the words Namo Amida Butsu, and then it becomes as a light that shines upon and nurtures every being. This phrase, hereafter referred to as the name Namo Amida Butsu, contains all the essentials for liberation. Hearing the intent of that name becomes entrusting, and reciting it becomes practice. Thus, the vow's fulfillment is accomplished through the name. Further, Amida Buddha embraces all beings and, quote, takes us in never to be abandoned, close quote. As an expression of the Buddha mind, its higher wisdom and active compassion are likened to light. While hearts and minds are hurt and distressed by efforts to get by in everyday life, and awareness of the truth is obstructed by ignorance and base passions, human beings cannot see Amida. Yet they are always enveloped by the light of great compassion and protected by it. All beings are liberated just as they are, complete with their unawareness and base passions. 
the emancipating power of the primal vow provides an unshakable foundation for human existence. Namo Amida Butsu.